Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at the preloader in Pixie. Now, we haven't talked about it previously because, well, the projects have been pretty small, but as projects get bigger, uh, more graphics you have, you add sound and music and those kind of things, and then you'll want to make take advantage of a preloader preloader because obviously um, you, know, you want to have those assets available uh, when you actually want to use them to create your game. So, and it's not a new concept. I mean, if you played any type of game on an Xbox or PlayStation or even a PC, they're going to preload graphics and sit there and waiting for a meter to go to basically show what you've loaded. And so that's not, uh, you know, this is not that different. It's pretty much the exact same thing. And the whole idea, once again, is that you want your assets available for you to use when you need them as opposed to waiting for them to load on demand. All right, so how we're we going to do that? Well, so here's my basic stub here, which only has a uh, onload event and creates a uh, a app and puts it onto the stage. If I hit go live, you'll see it's basically there. It is not a whole lot going on, right? So let's talk about uh, creating some stuff. Now, currently I only have a bullet and player in my images area, but let's go and run paint and make a whole bunch of other things just so we can have something to play with. So in paint, I'm going to resize this to say, let's make some, uh, oh, about 200 pixel by 200 pixel things. All right. And I'll fill it with like, I don't know, uh, green, I see a purple color. Here we go. Let's fill it with purple and use the bucket to fill that. And we'll just save this save and we'll just call it, um, uh, let's see, we'll call it bloat zero one dot PNG. All right. Well, and we'll go and replicate that a couple of times. There's a bloat zero one. We'll copy and paste that and we'll rename that Hit F two to rename it. All right. And you see that right now, they're not very big, right? They're, they're uh, six, 6.12 bytes. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and actually make them a little bit bigger than that. So add some, add some stuff to them to make it, in, uh, make them, uh, make them uh, not just solid colors so that we can have something to you know, give some, some sizable things. Cause obviously a solid block is not very interesting. And uh, obviously it's very small, right? So here, so let's, we'll save this now. File, save. All right, so let's just save this bloat PNG. Go back in here, and there it is. And so now it's 5K as opposed to uh, six, uh, 612 bytes. So we'll use that. I'll delete this, and we'll copy this one. Copy Control V, and then we'll rename it with F2, and we'll copy it a couple of times. All right, paste it again, F2. And then I'll uh, do it a few more times here, so we can have. Uh, let's do it. So we have some stuff to play with here. Four, five, and six, seven, eight. Nine and one more. All right, ten. Okay, so now we have ten bloaty PNG files that we're going to use. They're all five K each. That doesn't seem like a lot, but this will be a good example of what we'll use it for for a preloader. Okay, so we'll go back to our code. Let's close all these guys down. Let's see. Close, 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 close. All right, close, close, close. All right, here we are. So back to here. All right, so before doing anything else, so we have our stage set. So now we'll actually use some preloads loaders. So we'll do a comment for ourselves, preload assets. And so the app itself has its own loader. Okay, and we'll set its base URL so that we have to keep pasting it to images. All right, because that's where I put everything is on my images folder, right? See here, it's my images folder. And so now we're gonna load them. So app.loader.add. So this is where we can actually start chaining uh, the things we want. So we'll call it, uh, well, let's see, so sprite, uh, let's see, zero, 01, all right. And now we're going to give the name. So images is already set as our, as our base URL, so we just got to basically put the 1 through 10 in here. So we do a player, that's also a player, bloat, bloat 01.png. Okay, and so we're, we're going to chain this by basically just uh, putting this a new line and just copying and pasting this a couple, a couple times. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Alright. So see two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, and 10. All right, and then of course we'll have to add our, our other, our own real thing, my player. And of course I change the numbers here too. Okay, so let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so this is going to be the name of our resource. And this is the image and that we're going to load into uh, into this resource. Okay, so that's one thing. So now we set the, the loader to basically use those, but it's not going to do anything until we tell it to load. And so there are events that, that uh, get triggered by this. So let's see, we can do, and we can add our own functions to them. So we'll have loader dot on progress is a good one to have because obviously we want to show you a user progress, right? So and we, we basically add a function. We'll call a function called show progress. Okay, and then we have another one, uploader dot, uh, let's see, on complete dot add, and we'll say it's a done loading. And then we'll have one for errors. Obviously, you want to report errors, right? You don't want to just leave people hanging if something is wrong. All right, so on error, and then we'll just say report error. Okay. So then now it's all set. Now we have to now we can initiate it by doing app.loader.load. And that makes it run. So let's take a look at the code again. So what we have here is we set our base URL for the loader that's gonna look at images. Okay. And then we're, the loader we're adding a bunch of sprites that we're gonna use, one zero, one through ten, and our player, and we're passing in the files that's gonna be a load that's gonna load for that resource. Okay. So this will become the name of the resource and this is the file that we're loading into that and we'll reference it by name. Then we set up our events. So while it's loading, we're gonna basically call this function. And when it's complete we'll call this done loading function on error, then report the error. And then ultimately we start the, the process as it goes. So now we'll set the create the functions for that now. So we'll create a function for show progress. Okay. Of course, we pass in our E for our event. And we'll just do a console.log. All right, E dot progress. Okay, so then that will show, so we're gonna log, uh, console log how the progress is for loading. Okay, we'll do the function here for report error. Okay, and then what happens in the error? So we do a console.error. And we'll say it's the error colon, and then we'll, we'll report the e dot message. All right, for the error message, so we'll see that, and we'll we'll cause some errors in a little bit to see you have what that looks like. And then we'll do a done loading function. All right, and so we'll console dot log done loading. Yeah. All right, there it is. All right, so. Let's see what this does. So I'll save this, and I'll load this up here, and I'll bring up the debugger. Now it uh, went really fast, so I hit reload again, and see it goes really quick because obviously we're we're we're, we're local, right? So it's going to go fast, and so you see that uh, the preloader itself uh, issued various uh, points here. Let's say the 19. These are the percentages to finally hit 100% to get our done loading. All right, and that's great. So that um, you know, so if it's slower, you can actually, for example, show a progress meter or update some text to show that you're you're in the middle of loading all this stuff. If you want to see it, you know, really work, you can go to the network tab and in, in here and change it to say like uh, slow 3G, okay. And then if you re reload here, you'll see that it reloads, and you'll see here as it goes. So it's reloading and it's simulating a very slow. Uh, you know, connection. So you know, it sees it's, it's requesting these things. You see how it's slowly coming in now, and it's done. So it's not awfully slow, but you know, with this, you can see what it would look like if you, uh, you know, you didn't have a quick connection. So turn that back on. Go back to here. Okay. So let's take a look. So how do we use this now? So great. Now we have these. So how do you use it? So we've been using the the. You've been probably used to using things like. Uh, We've been doing like the pixie dot sprite dot from right so and we've been passing in the path of the graphic well we don't need to do that anymore so now we can actually reference the resource in here so let's, let's go and do that now all right so let's go into the done area here and let's go and use it uh, and set uh, our player so i'll say player for example here 
and we'll do something similar. We'll do still use the pixie dot sprite dot from, and now instead of using the path of the file, we're going to basically use app dot loader dot resources dot player dot texture. All right, so with that, we're going to get the 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 graphic we want, and then we do everything else with the same. Right? So player dot x equals uh, let's see app dot view dot Let's see, width dot slash divided by two, player dot player dot y, app dot view dot height divided by two, so it's in the center, and let's see, player dot, let's see, anchor dot set 0 0.5, and then let's see, app dot stage dot add child and player. I'll save that, and I'll go back to here, you'll see that it worked out. All right, so once again, it loaded up, did all that, done loading, and there it is. So that's so that's how you use the resources there and there. Actually, if you want to interrogate it, app.loader here, dot resources, and hit enter, you'll see that there's my stuff. You see that each one of these guys is here. So my players, sprite one through 10 are here, and you know there's URL in there, and then you know if you interrogate it more, you see the, the texture is the actual, like, you know, this is the, the main thing you use for you know, referencing the bitmap data that you're going to use for your sprite. But each one of these is here, so you can actually reference them using this methodology here. Okay, it's a bit wordy, but um, you know you can always variable part this part and then reference it that way. All right. So let's take let's take a look at erroring out something. So let's just break some of this. So let's just say uh, add some break some of the file names, for example. See what happens. All right. So let's say so. We'll save this and we'll go back here and you'll see that I have errors now. See this? So I reported the error. Failed to load element using image. All right, so uh, you can see that itself here, okay, um, Pixie itself will report in the console an error, okay, but we caught it ourselves. And so now with our own function, we can basically report an error differently because because uh, the user will not see this because the user will see that, you know, it's in the console here. But for example, for you, as the programmer, you can take this and say to display something, a warning message on here, an alert box on there, to basically say something is wrong. So, uh, doing it this way uh, with a with an on error report error function like this gives you more flexibility to determine what happens when there is a problem, uh, when you know, something goes wrong where you can't load the image, or something is wrong with the path, or something's missing. All right. Okay, so there you have it. A quick look at using the preloader and how to use the resources with the preloader after you have you know, gotten the data and are ready to go.